My name's Jeff Bajoric, and my career in sales has been a hell of a ride. And I want to bring you along with me. If you prefer to sell things at a premium, if you never want to win a deal on price, rethink the way you sell. My name's Jeff Bajoric, and I'm the host of the Rethink the Way You Sell podcast. Thanks for being here today. Um, today, I want to share with you a conversation I had with my friend, Larry Levine. Um, Larry is a speaker. Larry is an author. Larry is a coach, a sales trainer, a consultant to sales leaders. And uh, we had a conversation about the sales manifesto. I love that word. And uh, this actually came from, this is another session that was recorded for Deeper Thought a couple of years ago, um, actually back in 2020, the end of 2020, when we still didn't realize how much of a hold that COVID was going to have on uh, the just not, not just the industry and the space, but the world itself. And that's referred to a little bit in this discussion um, as it underscores the importance for having a manifesto. And I think about a manifesto as a statement of your why, perhaps a restatement of your why. And what if you wrote one? Have you written one? Do you have one? What if you shared it publicly? What would that do to change your relationships with your current customers? And what would it do to set the tone for potential relationships rather with your new customers or your prospects? I'd like you to think about that as we move forward, and I'll be back at the end to kind of put a bow on things and uh, tell you about what's coming next. Do you have a clearly defined sales manifesto? Written by Larry Levine, read by Doug Branson. How many of you are having a personal growth conversation with yourself? A series of honest internal conversations can spark lasting and meaningful change. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves. The process never ends until we die. And the choices we make are ultimately our own responsibility. A personal manifesto gives your sales life meaning. A manifesto. Do good work every day. Stay noble. Be honest. Be perfectly clear. Be myself. A manifesto is a declaration of one's beliefs, opinions, motives, and intentions. It's a document declaring what's important to someone. This serves as a statement of principles or even a call to action. A manifesto may challenge assumptions, foster commitment, provoke change, or may even challenge the status quo. A personal manifesto can help serve the following. As inspiration to live your life with purpose, as a foundation upon which to build your life, as a frame for your life, as your sales north star. A manifesto becomes valuable and serves as a constant source of inspiration. It becomes something that can easily be read on a daily basis. Imagine waking up in the morning, rolling out of bed, grabbing a cup of coffee or tea, self-reflecting before you start your day as you spend a few minutes reading through your manifesto. This would help keep your mind focused around your priorities, On a daily basis, you are reinforcing your values over and over again. What are your sales values? Here's where your manifesto could have a huge impact to your sales career. Imagine sharing your manifesto with others. Think about sharing with your clients, future clients, and friends. Imagine how this could elevate your status within their minds. It now becomes your public creed through which you are presenting yourself, your beliefs, and your future self. I sincerely believe this will elevate your status and enhance your sales career. This will allow you to professionally grow and help you live out those beliefs. When all is said and done, 
The true hallmark of a sales professional is knowing what you believe and having the guts to live it. This is what selling from the heart is all about. Um, Larry Levine, thanks for being here, bud. I really appreciate the work that you do. And we've just been, I mean, we've been talking for years now, but we were just talking off, off recording here about how everything that you do, um, everything you write about is our things that you do. You write from experience. You, you, you are trying to help others the same way you helped yourself. And I think, you know, and this is something we've touched on in other conversations, but this clearly defined sales manifesto manifesto is like one of my favorite words. I love that word because it's, it's, um, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's manifest. What are you trying to manifest in your sales career? And you and I talk about the difference. I think we use different words, but there's a difference between a salesperson and a sales professional. I, I call it the difference between a sales professional and a professional seller, right? But we're, we're saying the same things. Do you take things seriously? And this sales manifesto is a concept. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I have one. I, I'm, I'm always moving towards something, but I don't have a real clear picture of what that is. You do. And I want you to tell me where this this whole thing came from. So, you know, so it's interesting. It it went back to, you know, my days in sales. I call it, I'm going to keep it simple, Jeff. I just called it my Pledge of Allegiance. That was before I really knew what a manifesto really was. But I would make a pledge and it was my commitment to my clients. It was my commitments to somebody that I'd like to bring into my family and where I was working. And it was just, it was just, it was my way of sharing. This is who I am as a person. And this is the values and this is my mantra. And this is what I'm going to bring to your organization. And once I started doing that, people started to look at me a whole different way. They started to go, holy smokes, is, A, is this guy for real? But then it took conversations in a different way. It took our relationships in a different way. I remember one time I had a CFO of a company tell me, I wish my salespeople would act like you and carry themselves like you. And so I knew I was on to something. I just called it my pledge, my commitment, my vision, and so forth. It was really as I was writing Selling from the Heart, Jeff. And I go, you know, I, got, I have to put a bow on this somehow. I really need to put a bow on the last chapter selling from the heart. What happens if I tied in a selling from the heart manifesto to this? And I shared with my readers and I shared with the community what the selling from the heart manifesto was all about. And it became a downloadable thing. So, you know, if people went to sellingfromtheheart.net, you can find the manifesto on the website. It was our pledge, right? And, and just to give you an idea, you know, some of it was, you know, selling from the heart sales professionals lead with their heart, not their wallet. Mm-hmm. No empty suits. No empty suits. It's things like that. And then as I started to see how, how people were latching onto this, I go, you know what? I'm going to start writing about it. I wrote about it a couple years ago and I resurrected a couple year ago, a couple years ago, an article. And I really pushed the button on it a couple weeks ago. When I said, hey, you know what, especially given what we've all gone through for the vast course of 2020, what would it be like if sales professionals out there said, hey, you know what, I'm going to rise above everybody else. And this is my pledge. This is my pledge. This is who I am. This is what I value. Now, let's take it one step farther. Imagine, right? Imagine a sales professional through that buyer's journey or the sales journey, however they want to identify to it. And they get executives, right, in a round table, executive decision makers, key influencers, whether that be a face-to-face round table or a virtual round table. And somewhere in that journey, that sales professional says, you know what, if we agree that we're the right fit, let me share with you what you can expect from me. Let me share with you the experience you can get from me. Oh, and by the way, here's my vision. Here's my mission. And by the way, I've put together a sales manifesto, which in other words is my commitment to you. And then they just stop, Jeff. Can you imagine what would happen? Can you imagine the conversations and how that sales professional instantaneously has elevated the game? You're, you're talking about laying out the vision for what a, for what an engagement looks like. This is what you can expect to see. And it's funny, I, I've said this, you know, recently, I, I, 
I had a client that was really giving me hell because I pull these um, metaphors out of thin air sometimes. <laughs> Maybe it's a blessing. Maybe it's a curse. We'll call it a talent for now. But, you know, I, I said there's that moment where as the trusted advisor, you proverbially, because you can't do this literally right now, you wrap your arm around the shoulder of your client and you look off into the horizon and you say, this is where we're going. I can help you get there. Right. This manifesto where you're laying out, this is what you can expect from me. This is where I think we're going. This is what I believe is possible. This is what I expect you to experience as a result of this process that we're embarking on, are you with me? Like that is, that, quite frankly, that's something that most people don't do. They, they don't even think that far ahead to even, ha to, they, they're not, not only do they not deliver that message, they couldn't if you, if their life depended on it because they don't know. You know what, and you bring up some fabulous points and you know, a lot of people don't know, and, and you know what, it's okay, and, and you can go on the journey and self-discovery and find that out. It's just, you know, we've known each other for a while, Jeff, and we've shared stories about each other, and, and you know what really makes me tick. And I was harder on myself than anybody was. And I said, you know what? I can do something different and I can rewrite the course of how people view me and how they change, how they look at salespeople. But I know what I know is I can control what I can control and I can't control what I can't control. I can control how I carry myself. I can control how I walk, talk and act with people. Why not just rewrite how people view me? And it's my commitment. And this is why I've, I've always said this time and time and time again, business is personal. There's a lot of people who may not agree with me on it, and it's okay, right? We've heard the cliche, Jeff, right? Hey, you know, it's, you know, it's all business. Don't take it personal, right? right? It's just business. Well, guess what? Business is personal. Business is personal. And if you can bring that to the forefront and you're okay with it, see, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I always was, still am to this day. I don't mind sharing what makes me tick. And, and here's why. You're asking a company, Jeff, right? Salespeople are asking a company to invest their hard-earned corporate dollars with you and your company to help them solve a business problem, a challenge, help them do better business. If they're going to fork over six figures or more or even mid five figures, then guess what? Make it worth their while. Show that you mean it, show that you care, show that you'll be there. And all of a sudden, guess what? It changes the course of how they view you. It changes the course of their perception. The relationships start to flourish and they go, you know what? I want to deal with you and I want to deal with five other people just like you and all the other businesses that I have going on. You smell what I'm cooking? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of a story right now that I'm going to save because it's too long to tell at the moment. But um, that moment where the way you present yourself, the way you carry yourself, and, and this didn't have anything to do with a um, uh, with a client. This had everything to do with someone inside my company. And I reacted in a way that was very different from the way that they expected me to. And that paid dividends in my career for the rest of my time, that tenure with that company, because they knew they were dealing with someone different and someone who held themselves to a higher standard. I was expected to flip a table and leave the room. Yeah. And instead I said, huh, okay, now what? And they were floored. And it was just, uh, look, the greater good was not going to be served by me flipping tables. And when you can carry yourself and, and, and recognize that, look, what I'm doing here is supposed to, it's designed to help both of us. It's designed to help all of us in this process. And, you know, flying off the handle isn't going to help or acting in a totally self-interested way isn't going to help. Like, look, what are we trying to accomplish here? And, you know, and, and what does that lead to? You know, what did, what did your employer say when you left, you know, that last time, right? I, my, my employers were happy in some regards because they knew I was going on to something bigger. They were sad because they didn't know what they were going to do without me. And I literally had my biggest customer said, oh, no, what are we going to do without you? Joe six pack sales rep doesn't get those kind of responses. It's because Joe six pack sales rep does a nice job, He's serviceable. He doesn't call in sick very often. He gets a job done. He makes a few sales. He makes a decent living. 
He doesn't really further himself or really think about the personal investment in his own sales career. He's just doing a job. You know what? That's not you, Larry. That's clear. Certainly, it was never going to be me. No, and, and it's this one of my favorite words is why. And, and what concerns me is why can't the sales world carry themselves like that? And it just goes back to, you know, I, I don't know how many times, Jeff, I've been viewed as, I'm just going to throw it out there as a whack job, right? What are you doing? You, you can't, you know, you do this. And I said, yes, I do. I need to, I need to check with the censorship bureau. Can we say whack job on this show? Oh yeah, no, we're good. We can, we can say that. You know, I, I, <laughs> but, 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 you, but you understand is yeah, I'm comfortable enough. I was willing to do this because I know in order to, in, in order to grow, you have to try new things. You have to be willing to try new things. If, right. If, uh, if relationships mean a lot to salespeople and if you ask most salespeople, they're going to tell you, Jeff, my relationships mean a lot, then great. What are you doing about them? And the, it, it's not to disrespect the sales world. I'm a sales geek at heart. But you know what? If you have no customers, you have no business. And people buy you. And, and, that, and that's why the, I always talk about there's a difference between a sales rep and a sales professional. Right now, let's just take sales out of this and look at professionals just really quick. Look at a professional athlete, somebody who's at the cream of the crop, the highest of the high, the LeBron James, the Michael Jordans, God rest his soul, the Kobe Bryants, right? The Shaquille O'Neal's. Then we can look at all the other sports that are out there. They hold themselves to a higher degree of standard than anybody else. They work harder on themselves than anybody else. They hold themselves above everybody else. They expect more. And they have a no excuse mentality and they expect more. So I just translated that and I was never, right? I was never athletically inclined though. I love sports, but I took that sports mentality and I said, I'm going to hold myself to a higher degree of accountability and I'm going to raise the bar in the sales profession like none other. And that's all I'm doing. I, will, I just love to get salespeople and sales leaders to think, what would it mean to you if you actually created a sales manifesto, your pledge of allegiance that you, that you shared, right? That you shared with your clients, you shared with potential clients, you shared with your friends, your family, your inner circle, what would that look like? And furthermore, you had it up there for the public to see. Talk about changing the way people would view you. They would instantaneously go, holy smokes, what is going on? I need to get to know this person. It makes that transition to conversations a whole lot easier. Know what you believe and have the guts to live it out. That was my biggest takeaway from that conversation. Do you know what you believe? Have you done the work? Have you sat down and identified what your core values are? I mean, it's really tough to be in integrity with them if you haven't done that work specifically, right? And you know in big flowery terms and kind of uh, you know more diffuse terms what it is that's important. Okay, but have you sat down and actually thought about this? And I'm going to tell you how powerful of an exercise this is because I've done it. And what's interesting is you write those first three or four things down and all of a sudden it's, ooh, and this, and this, and this. Spend 10 minutes. I'm not going to ask you to publish it yet. You can if you want. There's a ton of power in that. There's a ton of accountability in that. But at least do the work for yourself before you consider doing it and and sharing it with everybody else. I did this work and and you heard a few episodes ago, my conversation with Tara Horsmeyer. This was one of the things she asked me to do. And that's why I know it's so powerful. And so I'm going to share them with you right now. She asked, what are your personal core values and principles? She asked another question and she said, what are your professional core values and principles? And I just said, see the last answer. So mine personally and professionally are the same. Yours might be, they might be a little bit different. But I'm going to run through them here right now. My personal core values and professional core values and principles. Take responsibility. Do the right thing. Be a good person. Tell the truth. Treat people with respect. Be curious. Be mindful, especially of the things you don't know. Look for the opportunity in every obstacle. Don't let your ego 
get in the way of doing the right thing. Do hard things on purpose and be generous. So that's 11, yeah, 11 bullet points I'm counting here. Um, Yours may not be that many. Your, Your list may not be that long. But think about what those guiding principles are and think about how identifying that or identifying them, rather, uh, will help guide your behaviors on a day-to-day basis. I want to thank Larry Levine. You can find Larry um, at sellingfromtheheart.net. The Selling from the Heart podcast is hugely successful. Check out those inspiring conversations. There's a new episode every week. You can find Larry on LinkedIn, of course. Uh, We will have links to both uh, his profile and that show in our show notes. Thank you for spending your time with me. Thank you for sharing your brain with me for the last few minutes. Um, If something that I have mentioned, if a question that I have asked you has really inspired you or has maybe caused you to think about some things that you had never thought of before, let's explore them. Shoot me a message, jb at jeffbajoric.com. It's an easy way to get a hold of me. I answer those emails. You know, if you have, you know, understood or, or discovered something that really needs a little more exploration, Let's do that. That's what I'm here for. Until then, we'll talk to you again very soon. Rethink the Way You Sell is a Pot About It production. It's mixed and edited by Doug Branson, with music by Blue Dot Sessions and Doug Branson. This podcast is masterminded by Jeff Bajoric.